So we bought a shed, 10 by 10 kit from Curtis Lumber. And we're gonna show you how we, two people in our 50s, put it together. Okay, we got all the wood cut. We're gonna build the box and try to get it leveled before the kit gets delivered. So this is what we got done yesterday. We got the basic frame done for the bottom of the shed. The shed comes with its own frame, but we wanted to make it a little more stable and secure because we're gonna be putting some heavy items in it. And we plan on it staying here forever. So uh, we planted the four corners yesterday and got it all level. And we are gonna plant the other blocks, hopefully today, and fill it in. Well, we just took delivery of our Curtis Lumber Shed Kit. There it is in its glory. Guy did a great job delivering it. Very nice, very thorough, on time. A couple of things I want to point out. This, uh, some ugly edges, man. It looks, definitely looks like it got either hit, and it has been sitting around for a little while the way the wood has faded. They might give us a little something off on the price for that. We could manage with it, there's no problem. But it is a disappointment when you pay money. Yeah. Check it out over here, look. What's Bees that? nest. What? Oh yeah, look at that. They even brought us a bee's nest. It comes with all the hardware, they gave us the nails. And one thing which is our fault was the height. It's six and a half on the yeah. opening. I wish it was a little taller. Um, and that's why they get more money for taller sheds because, you know, they're using extra pieces of T111 siding and, and you know, materials. So, but it's going to be good. It looks good. All the pieces look clean. We did order five extra pressure treated two by fours. Yeah, for what? For, for floor joists. So we could, we're going to end up spacing them one foot on center. Trim looks the good trim though. The trim looks great. The pine looks really nice. It clean. looks sweet. That's going to paint up beautifully. Uh, got drip edge here for the roof. Okay and some 30-year roofing shingles, architectural style. We have three-quarter inch heavy-duty plywood for the floor and the 5 8 T111 for the sides. The Which was style. an upgrade. So here's the full set of blueprints that came with it. All right, so we're staged for paint. That's the two A's and the B's. Here we have the E and two F's. Here we have the C's and the D's, and then back there is C's and D's. And according to the directions, we need to now paint them all. And we have a paint stain we didn't have to buy. My parents had it left over for when they stay in their house, so we luckily got that to use. I'm not sure what time it is, but it took us a couple hours, I guess. And we painted, and we're all ready tomorrow now to assemble the trusses and get the panels and everything all installed. So this is what we've got so far. Richie's just finished using the screws to screw them in. We upgraded to screws instead of nails so that things could be moved if necessary. Definitely a lot easier to work with screws. They're stronger. Oh yeah, they pull the twisted wood together better. It definitely pulled together a lot straighter. This brace has to come off, but we're gonna leave it for now because we are going to add extra floor joists in. So I just want to show you. See that one? Hangs over nicely. Next one, you have about a little over a quarter of an inch. <laughs> doesn't reach. Next one, reaches. Next one, doesn't reach. Next one, doesn't reach. And well, does that one even count? Because it's just missing the whole bottom of it. Couldn't afford one from Garden Time, which are built like rock. We didn't want the super cheap ones from Lowe's or Home Depot. Which were two by three construction. 24 on center. Curtis Lumber at least was 24 on center with two by fours. Even though some of the two by fours are missing so much on the corners that it's like a two by three anyway. We're gonna try to strengthen it up though, right? Yeah, we're gonna add some extra pieces and, and beef this up. Extra floor joists in. Definitely overkill, but considering we have a 400 pound ATV and a 400 pound wood chipper to go in here, we felt it was necessary. Position panels A, D, and F 
which would be the back. It says to start with the back. So that's our next step. Got the back wall up. We are getting ready to brace the two front trusses so we can cut the opening for the door. The two front trusses in the center are cut and we are now gonna frame the door. We got the two wall joists or the whatever you call those and the header. And now we're making the cap. None of the dimensions are right as per their blueprints. So you definitely have to have some experience building to know what you're doing here because their dimensions really just don't work right. They say to cut the cats one foot, 10 and a half inches because that's the space between a 24 on center, but their blueprints are 24 on center for all of the trusses, except for the two end ones where the cats go. So it's really off by about an inch. So we added these little extra, what are these called? Uh, tie straps. Tie straps. Hurricane ties. Were Hurricane ties, we're not sure, whatever. Anyway, we recycled them or repurposed them and we're just tying the base of the actual shed to the wood base that we created as the support. We have a floor that's a little out of order, but uh, for us, it was in order. Worked out good. Now it's time to put some panels up. The plans make no sense. If you're a really good carpenter and you know what you're doing, you definitely don't buy this kit. If you have absolutely no knowledge of carpentry at all, you don't buy this kit. If you're moderate like us and have some decent carpentry skills, you could pull it off. There's the doors, they're cut. We're putting the front panels on. We are not going in the order of the plans because it just really makes no sense. The next thing they want us to do is put the roof on. Before we even have these side panel wall joists in, which to us is just ridiculous because these trusses don't seem strong at all. So yeah, definitely have to know what you're doing and know where not to follow the directions. The floor directions, you know, with uh, adding the noise in, that was just the directions were not accurate there either. There was a mistake on cutting the panels for the back wall. Panel E wasn't colored properly on the plans. Again, you really have to have some common sense and some knowledge and some mathematical skills to be able to make heads or tails out of these <laughs> blueprints. Bottom line though, it's coming out pretty good. We're happy so far. Tomorrow, we're gonna do the, what are those called, sidewall joists? Gable sides. Gable sides, that's what we're gonna do. Yep. It calls for us to do the roof next, but we said, uh-uh, not yet. We're gonna do the gable sides what next. I wonder if there's a reason, but I can't think of one. A lot of things in their directions we did out of order on purpose, like the floor. We did that sooner than it was called for, and that was the best thing we could have done. Because if you follow the directions, it just didn't work right. So, so far so good. I am not an apprentice. <laughs> so we got the gable studs, we got those up. So they might want us to put the roof on to give it a little more stability, because it's pretty shaky, but we're gonna just do it this way and just be super careful, because we think when we put the last panel on, it'll make it a little, see how it's shaking? <laughs> that it'll make it a little more stable, but we're just gonna cut these in place before the roof, so it just makes sense to us to do it that way. So we unfortunately left the T111 to dry on surfaces that were not flat, because we didn't have any, and then it rained all over them, and they are just extremely bowed. So that makes it a little challenging. Next up is the roof panels. Oh, we're getting the roof on. I gotta say, it's tough, just the two of us. Some of these panels are really heavy, and well, let's just say we're in our 50s. We're getting it done though. So it got delivered Monday. Today is now Thursday, but we did have a downpour rainstorm and we haven't been working full days because the septic system has been going in and we've had a lot of other things going on. So we've been doing what we could each day and night as long as it doesn't rain. Shed looks okay. Looks good from here. Really good. Yeah, a little bit of a mud puddle. Oh, oh no. Oh, honey. How bad? Oh, 
It's just the soaking in on the bottom. All right. If you get them off the ground, they'll dry. But that's not a good spot because the rain comes right in the roof here. Yep, yeah, I know. The back is dry, that back corner. Paint brushes are soaked, tar paper, my gloves. Oh, all right, well. Too bad we didn't get top paper up there. Yeah, well. See, the line's good, so you can square it on the end. Please be square safe. It on the end over here. But it's gonna get slippery. And I'm gonna leave it a little bit long on both sides. The $15 Arbor Freight staple hammer works great. <laughs> Everybody else had them for twice that much. I need another piece of tar paper, sweetheart. I'm coming. All right, so the sky started opening up, so we quickly slapped some tar paper on the top of the shed so at least we have a dry space to throw our tools. Kathy's over there painting all the trim boards, all the fascia boards, and uh, I'm gonna be starting measuring for all the uh, soffits. Got a lot of painting to do and a lot of gray skies. Paint faster, Kathy. <laughs> I'm trying. Richie's making the inside of the door. He's so strong. I'm trying not to mess it up. You'll be touching it up with paint. We're exhausted. We're too old for this. Ah, uh, we're never too old. But swing up against each other, they don't hit. I'm like the Amish. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is panels, I think it was A and B. And you can see light right through. So they had instructed us to make the four cats and we think that was ridiculous. It should have really had a jack stud down the center so that that seam could have something to screw into. So we're gonna take these two cats out, I think, and put another wall stud, with jack stud, what do you call it? A wall stud. A wall stud. They should have just been one, two, like four straight up with a thing at the top and a thing at the bottom. Yep. And then the floor, well, it's not the floor that was the problem. What, you could see the light down through there? Probably get a screw in there. And over here too, we're gonna put some extra screws around the outside. But when the, the dimensions on the wall sheathing left a lot to be desired. We made the mistake of following the directions. Yeah, that's <laughs> Now we could give you the recommendations that if you build this shed, what we think you should do to make it better for yourself. Let the back panels cut long, don't go by their dimensions, just add like four inches. So three to four inches longer than what they you tell you. You always trim it. I mean, you can't add to it. You know, no. It's done. And now what we're, you know, because of their dimensions, we're a little short in the back here, and we're going to have to figure that out. And they don't give you a layout for how to cut the roof. <laughs> so that was challenging. But we got it. So a couple extra pieces of wood, it's going to be perfect. It'll be, it'll be fine. I want this place tight because we don't want bugs and mice and everything in here. So that's our thing. We painted the trim, we got the tar paper up, and Richie's working on the doors right now, and we're ready to take a break. So much rain. Look how foggy it is today. It's just been raining like crazy. Good for the seed, not good for the shed. We're trying. Finished the roof yesterday, yahoo! So another thing we did that wasn't part of the plans was beef up the inside of the door. The plans didn't call for anything on the inside of the door, but we did it anyway because Rich really wanted it to seal up really nicely. So they're nice and strong doors now. And here's our ramp. It's a little steep. It's right. not that bad. Look at it, it looks great. I'm actually pretty proud of that. All right, well the good news is. The shed is nice and dry. It sure is. You see a little daylight through there over your head, honey. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's okay, but yeah, no leaks. Not sure why that fascia board didn't go up when I was uh, pushing on it. Oh, you know what? I think that's when my nail gun broke. I might have to put a nail and push up on that. I don't think there's any nails in that. So, 
Dry as a bone. Yeah, it's dry. That's awesome. Good shelf you did, hon. Good shelf. Nice little workbench you got going there. Perfect. Yeah. We'll put the crap underneath it. Yep, this is really great. Screws up top. I love it. I really do. Perfect. It's like it was made for that spot. We won't.